It was only a matter of time before we got here. With a society hell bent on counting calories and scientifically engineering the ultimate snack foods, it makes sense that there are plenty of anomalous foods rolling around in the dark. Delicious, nutritious, suspicious, malicious. We've got edible entities to satisfy all sorts of hungers. If I'm being honest, I've probably consumed my fair share of anomalous foods and drinks myself. There's no way that Mountain Dew Baja Blast is that color without requiring some sort of unexplainable substance. And marshmallow bananas? There's no way that anyone would willingly eat one of those, but I keep finding myself at the bottom of empty bags. But those, those are low tier anomalies. Safe class, or even neutralized. They're not gonna hurt anyone. Anybody. Not immediately. The ones we're discussing today are much stranger. They could probably solve world hunger too, but the foundation isn't ready for that conversation. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes and today we are counting down the top 5 scary SCP creatures based on food. Shout out to Comics and the Cross on Twitter for suggesting this episode. Put on your chef's hat and catch up on the latest episode of Binging with Babish because today we are going gruesomely gourmet. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more flavorful fun. Outstanding, let's rev up those fryers. Coming in at number 5, SCP-2107. You've heard of Ecto Cooler, now get ready for Diet Ghost. Scarier thirst, made with natural ghosts. Sounds delicious if you ask me, I just want to know the difference between a ghost and a natural ghost. Is it like the difference between organic and regular produce? Or like a ghost that died by accident versus a ghost that was murdered? I'm genuinely curious. Let me know what you think the difference is. Diet Ghost is a can of soda pop that appears in various places every once in a while. The liquid itself is pretty much the same as any other soft drink on the market, but when you drink it out of the can, anomalous properties manifest. Around 5 minutes after you drink it, you'll begin to experience paranormal activity. No one else can see what's happening, but you'll believe that you're experiencing something similar to a pretty stereotypical haunting. The effects will continue until your body breaks down the diet ghost into waste, so it can last from anywhere between 1 and 3 hours, depending on your metabolism, and other things. The intensity of the haunting is proportional to how much you drink, so take it slow and know your limits. Some folks have been haunted to death, while others are simply taken along for the ride. And if I know anything about soft drinks, it's that the diet version is always a pale shadow of the original. Where's Ghost Classic? I need to know. Coming in at number 4, SCP-294. This is a very special break room coffee machine. It seems to be a pretty average vendor of hot drinks, but instead of the classic alphanumeric pad and a menu, we get a QWERTY keyboard. For 50 cents, you can type in any liquid and it'll be poured into a 12 ounce paper cup. It can produce any liquid, water, coffee, tea, beer, soda, acid, oil, molten iron, molten glass. If it can be a liquid, it can be poured out. Attempts to produce non-liquids like diamonds have proven fruitless though. The range of beverages this machine can produce is jaw dropping with some abstract ideas like a cup of music yielding anomalous yet relatively harmless liquids. One must be careful while using this though as reckless use can cause a whole lot of trouble. 294 was placed in a break room to cut costs and soon enough some less than responsible orders were put in. One time somebody ordered a cup of joe. Joe. You can imagine how that went down. An order of the perfect drink sent a man into shock who then later committed suicide because nothing would ever compare. That one probably had more to do with hubris than anything else. Another thing to note about 294 is that the liquid has to come from a pre-existing source. The machine can't just create matter. If something doesn't exist or is in extremely limited quantities, the machine may be unable to produce it, displaying out of range on the digital screen. It also seems to have knowledge of people's preferences and experience, being able to produce people's favorite drinks by inputting my favorite or something similar. 50 cents doesn't seem too steep for something like that, eh? Coming in at number 3, we've got SCP-871. This one could put all sorts of bakeries out of business and probably solve some hunger issues too. Although I'm not so sure cake meets the nutritional requirements of your average person. 871 is many cakes. Many, many cakes. 237 of them currently, but the foundation is working to keep it that way. These cakes vary in appearance and size, with the smallest being a cupcake, and the largest being a 2 meter Baumkuchen, you know, the tree cake made on a spit. Moving on, when any instance is eaten in its entirety, it will reappear approximately 24 hours later as a similar cake. Small variations may occur. If any cake is damaged in ways other than being eaten by humans, it will be replaced immediately. Seems fun, right? A whole bunch of free cake as long as you can keep up. Well, 
as the cakes seem to produce duplicates every 24 hours if not consumed, they could potentially become exponentially self-replicating. Infinite cakes forever. This kind of uncontrolled outbreak could end the world in a couple of months. Cakes covering every surface, contaminating sources of water, crushing infrastructure, ruining your Sunday best. Honestly, compared to a lot of other options, I'll take the cake apocalypse. Just imagine a tidal wave of cakes heading your way. Nothing else to do but sing happy birthday and prepare for the end. Coming in at number 2, we've got SCP-3521. Oh, Datto, where did you get all these bananas? This SCP consists of 16 gel tablets made by Datto in association with an unknown assassin. When consumed, an extremely large number of unpeeled bananas will manifest in the subject's stomach at an indeterminate rate. It seems that the bananas were meant to cause a lethal dose of ionizing radiation as bananas contain trace amounts of radioactive potassium. However, the cause of death is most definitely the 9.15 million kilograms of bananas bursting forth from the subject's body. Yeah, the radiation from the potassium almost seems like a non-issue compared to that. That's like Donkey Kong's banana horde eviscerating you from the inside. Upon recovery by the foundation they did some tests. These tests did not go well. The D-class who took the pill was immediately crushed by a mass of bananas. These tropical tubes then took over the testing chamber and destroyed the site's lower levels. Bananas upon bananas were crushed under the weight of more bananas, leading to radioactive banana goop pouring through the foundation site. This led to dozens of fatalities and the decommissioning of said site. Seems like a bit of an oversight, huh? I'm sure the site director went a little bananas upon hearing what happened. Yeah, that sucked. In the immortal words of Dado, good. You trust Dado and everything be okay. No worry, banana even better than plutonium. Wiser words have never been spoken. And lastly at number one, SCP-4252. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you manifest in a foundation site next to a bunch of weird stuff. That's not how the song goes, is it? SCP-4252 is a humanoid entity seemingly connected to four other objects known as 4252A1, A2, A3, and A4. These are a clock, a suitcase, a coffee cup, and a 2015 Toyota Highlander, respectively. Each of these objects infinitely produce baked beans through unknown methods. More beans than anyone could ever reasonably eat. Enough to inspire Bill Foster to keep thinking about Thos Beans. Keep on fighting the good fight, Bill. If you recite a certain poem aloud, the humanoid 4252 will manifest. Jethu sent the mighty king. Please bless our presence with your own. Consume our bubbling, beanuous bile from atop your sparkling throne. You gotta shower Jethu sent with the praise when he arrives, or he'll just head out. If you do a good enough job reciting the poem and complimenting the bean lord, he will consume all of the baked beans produced by other anomalous objects. However, he can't do it if you're watching, so all recording devices must be turned off and folks better look away. Once Jethusent is done, he'll disappear with a forceful belch, sometimes clocking in at over 120 decibels. That is one way to show gratitude for a meal. If you attempt to summon him again too soon, you'll hear a dial tone and a recorded message. Not ready yet, give me like a month and I'll get back to you. Fair enough, that was indeed a lot of beans. Interestingly enough, 4252-A1 no longer produces beans as the others do. During an incident classified as Incident-01, a wizard manifested in the room and zapped the clock. Following this, Jethusent manifested and tackled the wizard. The tussle that followed resulted in Jethusent breaking his arm, and then he killed the wizard. Obviously upset and distraught, Jethusent demanifested with the wizard's corpse. And now anytime he shows up, it can be noted that he has a mechanical replacement limb. The Lord of the Beans waits for no one. Man, some of these are super odd. And they're not even Dash J entries. Maybe we'll do a video about those soon. What do you think? Would you eat any of the anomalous foods from this list? I think the banana pill would be a good cyanide capsule replacement for spies, you know? If you get caught, you could kill yourself and destroy the enemy's stronghold in a hilarious manner all at once. It's a win-win if you ask me. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's have a quick look at some of your more gourmet ones from the top five most disturbing horror movie monster transformations, part two. Judson Gaiden asks, why do you say the and a instead of the and uh? Why does everyone talk like that nowadays? It sounds so annoyingly robotic. While I can't speak for everyone, I can tell you that I enunciate my vowels like that for the sole purpose of annoying you. So I'm glad it's working. The, a, the, a. BB1 says, I had to stop eating my breakfast to watch this. Probably a good call unless your breakfast was dry toast and seltzer water. Don't want your brain to mistake scrambled eggs for something else. Morgan Camilla asks, alright, do you get your eyebrows done or what? They're unreasonably nice. 
I always thought they were well within reason, but no, these are all natural. The camera mercifully hides my shadow of a unibrow as well. Toucan Chef says awesome sweatshirt. Where can we get it? Is your fashion sense hereditary? It's actually a t-shirt layered over a long sleeve, so it's not really a sweatshirt. It was a gift, but I'm pretty sure A24 made it in collaboration with Online Ceramics, so keep an eye out for a reprint. And Milky Bars 100 says, if a movie a decade old can still make you shift a little bit in your seat or go, man, that's messed up from effects, they did the style good. I wholeheartedly agree. I love it when a movie can make me tense up based solely on effects. Even better if I'm totally disgusted but still smiling. That's all the time we have for today. Before I skedaddle, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're looking for more scrumptious SCPs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.